Hi, I'm Rachel. Um, I have the channel Hello Rachel the First here on YouTube. Um, and today I wanted to try sharing something a little bit different. Um, I have been really, really enjoying watching um, knitting podcasts lately. So I thought it would be fun to try my hand at uh, making an episode of my own. Um, so I'm going to follow kind of the general outline that I see on here of um, finished objects, works in progress, and then um, upcoming plans. So yeah, let's get into it. Um, I have been like knitting a ton, a ton, a ton this year. Um, and I've got not as many objects to show for it as I would have hope to have finished, but you'll see why in a minute, because some of them are really intense. Um, so the first thing I want to talk about that I've finished lately is um, this Oversized Seasons Cardigan by Ozetta. Um, this is something that I finished um, mid-spring here, so I definitely got some good wear out of it. Um, I live in the Twin Cities in Minnesota, so we have, you know, cold weather late into the year, although this winter was kind of weird. But this was that has been super nice to wear and to work early in the mornings. Um, here, I'll try to show it a little bit better because it's just like very heavy and insulating um, without being like an actual winter coat. Um, so yeah, this has been super nice for that. I knitted it out of... Actually, I have a ball here of Knit Picks Twill in um, Undyed. Um, this is said to be a worsted weight yarn. Or, sorry, there's two versions, I guess. One of them is said to be worsted weight, um, but it is very heavy for a worsted weight, and it is also very dense. Um, so this is just, this is pretty hefty. Um, it is also held together with a strand of their rushed alpaca silk um, in the 01 colorway, or 00, whatever the white one was. Um, and it makes a fabric that has this nice halo to it. Um, if I hold it up, you can kind of see it, it really, blurs the edges of the fisherman's rib and I feel like because the whole thing is so um like fuzzy and fluffy like these big stitches that I, I worry about catching on things aren't getting caught so much um let's see I have my notes I knitted this on on US size 8 needles for the body, and then it also has you use um, US size 6 needles for the button band at the same time, which I found to be a little bit fiddly and didn't really enjoy doing, um, but it worked out really well, so, you know, who knows. Um, and then I just used these, um, small buttons. I had some bigger buttons in mind for it, um, but then when I held them up to the cardigan, they looked a little like the borrowers, which I love, but I worked for a long time on that and I wanted it to be a little more versatile. So just small plastic buttons um, sewed on with sewing thread. And that's my uh, Seasons cardigan. It took me most of the winter. <laughs> um, my other object was kind of a side project from something else that took me forever. Um, these are what I call my Copenhagen socks. Um, I, I don't know why I just visualized them as being, you know, something just a little it, like you know, like those Instagram girls you see the Scandi ones in who live in Copenhagen. Um, but the pattern I followed is the vanilla sock pattern by Kristen Lehrer or Volenvine, I guess, on YouTube. 
um, and they're knitted in uh, Croy sock yarn in the Brown Rose, um, which is the only sock yarn that I use because if I'm going to spend time knitting them, I do not want them to wear through. And this stuff is indestructible and washable in my washing machine, and I never have to worry about it. Um, and yeah, they're just a kind of standard vanilla sock. I did adapt it just a little bit at the heel because it um, it was it was really really pulling at this spot right here. Um, like a hole was opening up because I have um, kind of like a deep heel or high arch, whatever you say, like my foot is just very wide across that spot. So I um, just added on rows to my heel flat before picking up for the gusset. Yeah, and it's just a one by one rib cuff that I carried on for a while because I like the look of that. So those are my Copenhagen socks. Oh, and one other cool thing I discovered while doing these is that the reverse of my in the round ribbing is tidier than my main side, which I know is pretty common. So what I did was I um, cast it on, worked this much ribbing, and then I did a German short row turn and flipped it inside out and continued on stockinette side with the inside of my ribbing showing as the outside because it's just a little, a little neater and tidier. Those are my Copenhagen socks, now I'm done. Um, my other recent finished object is, oh my gosh, this is the Rising Dawn Wrap by Stephen West. It's been sitting in a drawer, so it's a little bit folded up. I probably should reblock it. Um, but it is this really beautiful wrap that um, has these eyelets in between sections of linen stitch um, and then has a small garter border followed um, by a pico bind off which I've never done before but I find to be absolutely stunning. Um, I'm sorry I just got a text so I'm like <laughs> uh, yeah so I'm not a huge shawl person as um, I feel like many people my age aren't. Um, but I was really intrigued by this pattern because I really loved the silhouette outline of it, the way that the increases kind of bell out and create all these really like lovely folds when you hold the top edge straight because I was interested in this as kind of a warm up skirt for ballet. So let me just kind of show you what that looks like. I'm, I'm really excited about it. Um, so usually I wear the kind of sun part kind of towards my back. And then um, there's two ways to wear it. I'll either tie it once around like that. And then, um, you know, I can do bar like this and warm up because it's wool, it keeps my legs really warm. Um, or I knitted it just barely long enough so that it can go around um, double, which looks like this. And that is a little bit more secure, has a little bit more coverage, and then you get this nice, like, kind of wrap silhouette from the line of the border going through. So yeah, that's my Rising Dawn wrap. Um, and a little bit about this. Oh my gosh. So I made a, I made a sweater with some knit picks. Can't remember what it's, their silk alpaca blend. Um, not like a mohair kind of yarn, but like a true two-ply. Um, and I ran out of a color, so I tried ordering their palette in the same color, Sagebrush, and while well, the color matched, um, and it was a two-ply, the texture and the weight 
definitely weren't close enough for me to finish up that way. So I had this extra ball of sagebrush um, just kind of kicking around in my stash. So I thought this would be a good stash busting project for it. Um, completely not tracking how many yards of yarn would need to be used, especially because I went down in gauge for this. Um, it, it's also in a linen stitch, which eats a lot of yarn too, because you're basically um, knitting a stitch and then slipping with the yarn in front, knitting the stitch, slipping with the yarn in front. So it really packs in a lot of yarn. So my first ball of it only took me to about here. And as you can see, this thing is enormous. So I think it took about four more balls of the palette. And then this is um, also Croissac in seashell colors. It's this kind of um, opal colorway with these really soft um, applied together different colors um, that shift gradually. And I, I especially like it up here where the shift is more gradual, whereas down here it um, blends together a little more, even though it is very beautiful in both places. So I think this was about a ball and no, this was a little less than a ball. And then this was the rest of that ball plus two more. So this was a lot of yarn. Um, and then the gauge, like I said, I sized down the gauge. I really am not a big fan of an open gauge with a textured knit. I think, I think an open gauge can be very eye catching. Um, but I think in my personal taste, I like an open gauge to be the focal point if it's going to be part of a garment. If it's an open gauge and then there's also something else going on, I think it tends to look a little bit like sloppy. And this was intended to be knitted on size US size six needles. And I swatched that out and I did not like it at all. So I sized down, but that obviously made it take way longer and way more yarn, although it is really nice and um, opaque. And I think the fabric looks very, very tidy. Um, it just took me probably about like five months. And that, that was not just like, like knitting relaxed at home. Like I would be in rehearsal for like 12 hours every weekend for Swan Lake and Nutcracker and Giselle. And I'd be just sitting there knitting this on all my breaks and it took so long. So yeah, that is my Rising Dawn wrap. Um, I have two more finished objects that I don't have here with me. Um, one of them is the Winter Stars headband that I made as a gift for um, the scholar coach who worked in my classroom this year. Um, and I made that in the Sirdar Country Classic in the gray and white colorways with the gray as the background and the white as the motif. <clears throat> Sorry, I don't know why I'm losing my voice. I was going to get water and then I forgot. Um, yeah, so I made that. Um, and I'll, I'll show photos here. That's why I sat to the side. Uh, and then the other finished object that I have is my window stars. Um, if you've been following my channel for any length of time, uh, you might know that in my bullet journals, I love to draw like little hanging stars from the tops of my pages just as a way to like add space and add a little bit of um, just like character to the page. So I had a leftover skein of yarn that I wasn't sure what to do with. I'd intended to be a contrast color for a sweater, but then I got it and I didn't really like it with the other yarn. So I just had it, you know, kicking around and I decided to work it up into some stars 
some knitted stars to hang from my window. So it looks like this. Um, I think it's so funny because I have the white curtains and then I have these like little hanging stars also in the light color and it looks just like one of my bullet journal pages. Um, these are a free pattern. They require you to cast on a certain amount and then you knit in and the decreases create the star pattern. And then you have to pick up the same number of stitches around the outside and then knit it almost all the way in, stuff it with whatever you want, polyfill I did, and then um, finish the last couple rows and cinch it in and sew it up. And then I just hung them with a crochet chain. Yeah, I really liked these. Um, what I did not enjoy and I still do not enjoy is picking up a bunch of stitches. So I have a little bit of the yarn left, like enough to probably make one more star. And I probably will eventually, but how much I hate picking up stitches has kind of dissuaded me from doing it anytime soon. Yeah, so those are all my finished objects, seen and unseen. Um, and now I'm going to move on to whips or works in progress. All right, um, work in progress number one is the Shelly sweater by Eri Shimizu. Um, it is a very open um, knit, like I said. I do like open knits, but I like the openness to be kind of the focal point. Um, so it looks like this. It is created using the leftovers of um, the drop cell pack of silk from my Seasons cardigan. Um, yeah, it has, I mean, I think it's kind of a saddle shoulder construction and then like into a little bit of a raglan. I'm, I'm not like a buff on this kind of stuff. Um, and it's this very open fabric, but what I'm really surprised about was I thought this was literally gonna be like netting on me, but it is so opaque for how thin the yarn is and the size of needles I'm using. These are, these are US size eight, um, and the fabric is this open, but still opaque, which is kind of cool. Um, not too much to say about this one. It's it's gone by pretty quick because it is so open and it like floats. You can't really see because the needles are dragging it down. But this fabric is so like light and floaty, and I had kind of envisioned it as being just like a summer morning sweater. I have a balcony here in my new apartment, and I thought this would be the perfect thing to throw on to go out and sit on my balcony and have coffee in the morning. In the summer. Um, yeah, I have just this ball left and I think I'm just gonna knit as far as it takes me unless it gets too long but I'll just knit as far as it takes me and then bind off and that will be my Shelly sweater. Sorry, my cat's like stalking something down there. Oh, it's her toy. It's not a bug. Good. All right. Um, oh, my other one's over there. I'll be right back. <clears throat> okay, ta-da! Um, this is the, um, Ridiculous by, um, Midori Hirose. It is obviously, like, a cult pattern, so I'm not gonna be the one to be, like, it's so good, you should knit it, everybody should have 10. Um, but it is so good, and it it's really cute um, and really fast and really fun. So do with that what you will. Um, mine is knit up in this um, Bommel Lin by Drops. Um, it's a very stiff yarn um, because it has a a fiber content, excuse me, of 53% cotton and 47% linen, um, which means this is gloriously cool to the touch. Um, I'm a very sweaty girl. Uh, I struggle in the summer. 
So the idea of having a all cotton and linen top really appealed to me. Um, and I watch, I watch the Well Love Knits podcast. As I said, I love watching knitting podcasts. So I was really inspired by her white short sleeve ranunculus, and I decided I wanted a white short sleeve ranunculus. Um, obviously, I was not going to make it in wool because I would just melt. Um, but in linen, sounded pretty fun, and this is very. This is a very hard wearing kind of fabric. Um, I washed my swatch and dried it on high in the dryer and it is really soft and holding up beautifully. Actually, now that I'm looking at it, I think the color has changed a little bit since I washed it. It's gotten a little bit whiter. I kind of like. Um, so I'm envisioning this as being something that I can wear out to the beach and just throw in the washer and dryer. Um, since it's linen, it will keep washing and getting softer and softer over time. Um, and I can sweat in it to my heart's content. Um, something that I really like about this pattern is how the lace yoke has this dip in the front with this really lovely like half circle that makes this almost like necklace like motif really stand out um, and is the perfect spot for a little necklace to hang over. Uh, yeah, so that's my ranunculus. I think it'll probably go pretty quick since um, I've already separated for the sleeves. These will be fast and the body will be fast. I think this much has been about four balls of this yarn so far. Um, yeah, these don't go very far. There's only like 197 yards in here. Oh no, no, I wish there was 172 yards in here. This has 93 yards in here. So it, one of these goes by so quick. So I'm gonna have a lot of ends to weave in, but that's fine, I don't mind that. Um, I think that's all I want to say about my ranunculus. Um, all right. I have two projects left. One of them I'm really excited about, but one of them I feel like I should show last because I am exhausted with it. I'll show you the exhausting one first. Um, this is, oh, and my yarn walked away from me. This is a self-drafted wrap pattern. I'm sorry, my cat is literally like scratching in her litter box right now, so if you can hear that, I'm really sorry. This is a self-drafted uh, wrap pattern, um, something that I kind of see as like a wide scarf to wear in the winter. It is in this really, really pretty um, payette yarn that you can't get anymore. Um, I had to find the last couple balls of this to finish it on eBay, and that was like a couple years ago. So this is a gorgeous, gorgeous knit in a gorgeous, gorgeous color with these beautiful iridescent sequins knitted into it. And you would think it would be itchy, but it's not itchy at all. It just feels, it feels like, um, like you know, your standard acrylic, um, but really pretty. This has been on my needles for like eight years. I started it when I was literally on the bus in college. No, not in college, in high school. Um, on my way to a skating competition, I casted this on. So I started this back when I was purely a process knitter. Like all I wanted to do was just knit and I didn't really care if anything got done. I kind of liked the idea of having, you know, a collection of knits that were very like intricate and um, time intensive because I didn't really feel like 
any urgency or like I didn't really care that much about like having the finished object. I just cared that when it was done, it was like amazing. Amazing, excuse me. Um, and I think it is. I have a ball and a half of the yarn left and then I'm gonna bind off. Um, so it's, I picked this up again after it being on hold again for about a year. Um, but I put it on my Chiaogu needles, which I started them not last Christmas, but I got them the Christmas before that and they've been like revolutionary for my knitting. And this was still on a pair of old, kind of bluntly tipped straight needles, which I think was part of the reason I wasn't interested in working on it very much, because, you know, it's it's hard to get in there, get inside the stitch. So I'm hoping that now that it's on some more high quality needles and the knitting experience will be a little bit better, um, I will finish it. My current, um, my current, MO with this is to knit about two rows on it as I'm like reading or listening to an audiobook in bed before I fall asleep so that it's at least going somewhere even if it's going slowly. Um, that is my ice star wrap. It's like a self-drafted lace scarf wrap kind of thing. Uh, yeah. Okay. This is getting long. No wonder these are so long. My next uh, work in progress is something I'm really, really excited about. Um, does it look like something magical yet? Just to me? Uh, this is something I am kind of working up without like a pattern to go off of, but just using my gauge swatch and my my design I sketched out. Um, this is going to be a dress. It's going to be a dress in the style of this kind of netted fabric, like very, very open. Um, just looks like kind of linen, rope or something on a small scale um, and it's going to have it's going to go down straight to about my upper hips and then I'm gonna have it I'm gonna make um, kind of regular circular increases every so often to give it a very like flowy uh, hem at the bottom. So um, my goal with this is for it to be uh, something I can wear to the beach also, kind of a swim cover-up. Um, and I, I was really inspired by a video I saw a while back of somebody knitting with um, kind of a natural color fiber like this at a very open gauge and they were um, threading on beads mid knitting uh, and they were using very big beads I'm gonna use very small beads because here's the here's the thing I ordered some rose quartz beads and I also got there's my camera well whatever you know I also got these beads from Joanne Fabrics, and I'm going to use a crochet hook to get them on, a very tiny one. Um, and I'm going to have, as the skirt flares out, I'm going to have some of these tiny beads start appearing, and then um, they'll get more and more beads as it goes down, um, including the slightly larger true rose quartz beads. And my goal for this is for it to be very beaded and heavy and flowy at the bottom of the skirt. Um, and it's going to look like kind of drops of water on a fishing net, um, like something like a mermaid would wear, kind of magical and slightly impractical, but perfect for being in or near the water, which is what I like to do all summer. 
uh, yeah, so this is something that I'm kind of drafting out of my head. Uh, so we'll see. I'm, I'm taking notes so that I can replicate, you know, for my back panel. But yeah, I'm really excited to see where this goes. Um, I should say I'm knitting it with leftover tin line by Sandiscarn. Um, in this kind of gray, white, beige colorway. Yeah. Um, which is a yarn I really, really like. I knitted this previously at a very fine gauge because as I said, I don't really like open knits unless it's for like the look of the open knit. Um, so I tightened up my gauge on another project with this and it was a very painful to knit with because I was pulling it so tight. And it was also one of those things where you have a ribbed button band that you want to pull really tight so that it doesn't sag. It was sagging so I was pulling it tighter and my needles were squeaking and it wasn't fun. So I did not enjoy knitting with this last time. Although I will say it makes a like beautiful fabric. Um, however, this time I'm knitting on Actually, I don't know what size these are because I found them in my old box at home. But I'm knitting on these wider needles to get this kind of open fabric for my like fishing net look I'm going for. Uh, and it's been really pleasant to knit in an open gauge. Um, I've also practiced really hard at calming down and like knitting with less tension in my hands while working on my showy sweater because it has that silk core that isn't very elastic and I just had to learn how to do that if I was going to make it through the sweater. So it could be a combination of both but either way this time I'm really really enjoying knitting with this um, and the fabric it makes especially at an open gauge is like the word that comes to mind is like whipped cream like it it is so drapey and cool to the touch and soft to the touch as well um, and yeah, I'm, I'm really, really enjoying this project. And my goal for this is to have it done really quick. So I'm hoping to just bang out that Shelly sweater and have that done. I might put the ranunculus on hold for just a little bit while I get my front and back panels connected to this and get started knitting in the round. Um, because I really want to have this when I go on vacation with my family in July. We're going to be traveling down to Myrtle Beach um, for like a celebration of life ceremony for my grandpa who passed away this past year. Um, and we're going to be spending some time, you know, at the beach while we're there, which was something really special to him. So I wanted to have this to wear uh, while I'm at the beach and while we're, you know, kind of celebrating my grand granddad who loved the water so much. So that's that. It smells really good like sunscreen because I was working on it on my paddleboard. <laughs> um, so it smells good, but I'm also like, does it have sunscreen oil on it? That's kind of gross. Yeah, whatever. All right. Those are all my whips I'm working on right now. And um, the only other thing I have to talk about is a couple other upcoming knitting plans. Um, I only have two things right now that I'm really solid about doing. Um, I would like to make a pair of simple, hard-wearing leg warmers with this. Um, this is the leftovers again of my twill from my Ozetta cardigan. Um, I think, especially if I knit it at a tight gauge, they should offer me a little bit of compression in my, um, in my knees and in my calves. You can just kind of see my tape here, but I've been dealing with some knee and calf issues while I'm, um, dancing, especially, um, on point. So it would be super nice to have. Um, a pair of really thick wool leg warmers to really keep the heat in um, because 
that generally tends to make the pain not so bad while you're dancing and helps your body kind of relax. So that's one plan. And then I have, sorry, I have two cakes of this yarn. And because it's so dense, I don't think it's they're going to be super long. So what I'm going to do is I'm literally just going to cast on one, knit in a tube. I might even do like a rolling stockinette hem because I kind of like that look on leg warmers. Um, and then I'm just going to do the same with the other and however long they are is how long they're going to be and I'm not going to be precious about it because you do a lot of stuff where your knees have to touch the floor and the studio floors are disgusting so don't be too precious about it um, or you're going to be sad. Um, yeah, okay, so my only other plan, it's something I was going to start pretty soon but now that I've decided I want this dress done I should name it so that I'm not just calling it like the dress. Um, so that I have this dress done by vacation, I'm gonna put this on hold, but I am gonna use my leftovers from those headbands. Um, I made one for my sister in the winter as well, but I don't have good photos of that one, so I won't bother you about it. It was the same as the gray, but just with this color instead of gray. So what I'm planning on doing is making a Stella quilt cushion with the leftovers um, using this Sirdar Country Classic DK. Um, it'll be perfect for the DK version of it and since it's got acrylic in it it should be you know a little bit hard wearing. Um, I've got my cat over here who likes to make muffins in the pillows so hopefully this stands up to her uh, otherwise I can put it on the bed it's fine but my color palette that I have selected for this is um, I'm gonna use this white as a background I hope it's enough I'm not gonna knit the back I'm gonna make it out of fabric because I don't want to knit a square for the back like I just don't want to I have other stuff I want to do um, so this should be enough for just the front uh, and then I'm not gonna use this for it I'm going to use the leftover green and then I'm also going to use this dark brown um, chocolate color and then this pink and I think this will be a really nice, sorry my lisp is like really coming out right now, I'm trying to control it. I think this will be a really nice palette for this and I, I really like how I have two kind of lighter colors one of them warm and one of them cool, and then two darker cooler, coolers, two darker colors with a cooler one and a warmer one. And then I'm just gonna mix and match. I've made some drawings. I'm not gonna show them right now because this is getting super long, but um, I'm gonna mix and match to make um, the four color combos, you know, one for each like corner, you, you know, you know. Um, and then just do the white as a background. And I chose this project because I have these pillows on the couch that I picked out without looking at the couch. And they're the same pattern as my couches, but bigger. And I didn't really clock that when I was buying them. So I'm kind of excited to get these off my couch and get something cuter on it that I will enjoy more. Yeah. So those are all of my finished objects, works in progress, and some upcoming ideas for what I want to knit. Um, yeah, let me know if you liked the podcast from me. Um, I know you're probably used to seeing, sorry, it's the table. I know you're probably used to seeing like more bullet journal content on here for me. Um, but I don't really enjoy editing those videos, so I haven't been motivated to make them. So I thought this might be kind of a nice way to um, just stay in touch with you all and share something else that I'm working on. Um, and I'll probably, I mean, I'm obviously keeping up with my knitting journal and my bullet journal, so I might do some more of that on Instagram. I don't know. But it's summer, school's out for summer, I'm a teacher, I don't have that much else to do. So I'm, I'm going to try to be online a little bit more, and we'll see. I'm hoping to make another episode of this before I go away on vacation, 
Um, and I'll tell you whether or not I finished the linen dress. I'm kind of anticipating having to be knitting it while I'm on the car right there, but we'll see. Hopefully not, especially because I want to do the beading towards the end because it's going to be top down. So I don't know. We'll see. Hopefully it'll be done and I'll be able to show you. Yeah, that's all I have for you today. Thank you so much for watching. Um, I understand if this wasn't what you subscribed for, but if you are interested in this kind of content, um, please do subscribe so that I know to keep making it. And yeah. <laughs> all right. I will talk to you soon. Um, and thank you for watching. Bye.